Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Today we're going to be talking once again about the AMD Radeon RX 6600 XT because, well, the card has been on the market for just under a week now and we have a much better idea of how pricing and availability is shaking up. Specifically, at launch, AMD made some pretty bold promises to us surrounding availability, so in this video we'll be following up on those to make sure AMD has actually done what they've said. And this is super important because last time, at the launch of the Radeon RX 6800 and 6800 XT, AMD got us on a phone call and spent some time telling us how these GPUs, which were out of stock and overpriced at the time, would be available from board partners at the MSRP in four to eight weeks. That turned out to be a lie, or at the very least a huge miscalculation of their own product supply, as even today those GPUs aren't available at the MSRP or even just regularly in stock at any price. We're not going to let AMD get away with that sort of rubbish again, so we've been taking a close look at how the 6600 XT is shaping up in comparison to their claims. Before we take a look at how the 6600 XT actually ended up in the market, we should just firstly clarify the claims that AMD made to us. This time around, we didn't get any firm guarantees on timelines for availability or anything like that, but AMD did tell us that cards will be available at the MSRP on launch day, and that supply will be decent enough to hopefully give a large portion of gamers an opportunity to purchase one. It seems that several other reviewers also received similar messages from AMD, so it looks like we weren't alone there. We also had heard from retailers that supply of 6600 XTs was indeed looking reasonable. So were AMD's claims about being able to buy an MSRP 6600 XT at launch true? Well, for the most part, at least for a period of time on launch day, this does appear to be true to a limited degree. In Australia, for example, GPU shoppers were able to purchase an RX 6600 XT from PowerColor at our local MSRP of 590 Australian dollars for several hours, from at least the initial launch at 11 p.m. the previous night, right up until the following morning. This was really unlike most other GPU launches in recent memory, where cards would sell out virtually instantly, and certainly MSRP cards would not be in stock for hours. We also heard multiple reports from viewers around the globe that availability was quite similar in their region, and indeed, multiple news outlets were covering the launch, lauding the fact that new GPUs were being sold at reasonable prices with reasonable stock. In the United States, on launch day, it sounds like Micro Center, as one example, had PowerColor Fighter and Gigabyte Eagle models in stock at the $380 MSRP, if you were willing to purchase one in store, while Newegg also sold some of these GPUs online, though it was through their Newegg Shuffle Allocation System, along with many other cards of varying prices. But basically, the situation at launch looked decent in most regions, and if you really were desperate for a 6600 XT at or near the MSRP, it would have been more possible to get one this release than with any prior release this generation. That was launch day though, which is only part of the story. It's all well and good to have a few cards available at MSRP on the day of release, but a bigger achievement is hitting the MSRP on a consistent basis moving forward. After all, a theme of these launches has been to release cards at the MSRP on a limited time basis to fulfill any dubious launch promises before jacking up the price for every other model. So how is the stock situation looking right now? Well, in some regions, not too bad. Here in Australia, at multiple retailers, you can still buy an RX 6600 XT. You'll just have to pay at least 100 Australian dollars over the MSRP, which does sound like a large price inflation, but at just 20% over the $580 MSRP for us, that's a significantly lower amount of inflation for in-stock GPUs compared to other models. For example, if you want an RTX 3060 or 3060 Ti, you'll need to spend at least $1,100, a massive $400 increase on the 6600 XT, which makes AMD's offering a comparatively good deal. In the UK at overclockers.co.uk, they are reporting stock for cards like the Sapphire Pulse 6600 XT at a price tag of £380, which is a 15% price inflation on the UK MSRP of £330, along with a few other similar models like the PowerColor Fighter and Sapphire Nitro Plus. Again, we're talking about several days after launch and only seeing a modest price inflation on the MSRP. In other regions like Germany, it's much harder to buy a 6600 XT with basically all models out of stock at major retailers like Mind Factory and Case King, so there does appear to be some regional discrepancies. Taking another random European country as an example, we have Sweden at local retail Inet, and 
It's a bit different again, several models still in stock with prices as low as 5200 kroner, which is a similar price inflation versus MSRP as other nations, knowing that Sweden unfortunately gets a bit rolled on pricing locally, as we've been told by some of our viewers that live there. The United States, unfortunately more of a Germany situation where stock has quickly evaporated from most retail stores. Places like Newegg, for example, are still sending their stock to the shuffle, so it remains unavailable to purchase on demand like you will see in other regions, regardless of the price. You'll see the dreaded out-of-stock bundles on their website right now, and while you might have some luck at Micro Center if you have one near where you live, Several days after launch, I certainly wouldn't class it as particularly easy to purchase a 6600 XT in the USA outside of scalpers. So I think that's giving us a pretty good look at how stock is shaping up at this very moment. And like with many prior GP launches, it does vary from region to region. At least today, if you live in one of the lucky countries with stock, if you wanted a 6600 XT right now, that does appear to be possible, and price inflation is roughly 15 to 20% above the MSRP, which in US dollars would put the current retail price around the $450 mark. The reason why there are cards still in stock in some regions is down to a couple of reasons, but in speaking to retailers, we are hearing a clear trend. Board partners simply had a larger than usual amount of 6600 XTs to sell. One retailer told us their launch allocation for just one model of the 6600 XT was larger than all launch allocation for NVIDIA's RTX 3060 Ti, 3070, 3080, and 3090 GPUs combined. Stock levels have been described to us as very generous considering the current state of the GPU market, and I think that has surprised some of these retailers which has allowed stock to remain on shelves for longer than usual. From that perspective, along with what we've actually observed on launch day, it seems that AMD were largely telling the truth about availability. However, we have less good news to share about pricing going forward. While AMD said that cards will be available at the MSRP at launch, and again, that does appear to have happened for at least a period after launch, it doesn't sound like you'll actually be able to easily find MSRP 6600 XTs in the future. Retailers have told us that the base model cards you've seen at the MSRP, the Power Color Fighter being one example, are not expected to be restocked in any significant quantities, or in some cases retailers aren't expecting restocks of those cards at all. The sentiment here is that these MSRP cards were effectively a promotional price for launch day. We've been told the vast majority of expected future supplies being allocated to higher priced models, not necessarily the most premium 6600 XTs, but the next tier above the base model, things like the Power Color Hellhound and Red Devil, the Gigabyte Gaming OC, the Asus Jewel, these are the cards that are most likely to be seen moving forward with prices to match. Locally in Australia, it's unlikely we'll see cards priced below $700, so 20% above MSRP, and again, we expect similar in other regions, including for future resupplies in the United States. The good news is that availability for these mid-priced cards is looking pretty good in the future. I've heard of several more generous resupplies coming in the next few weeks, at least generous relative to the things that we've been seeing recently, but that does appear to be at the expense of those MSRP models. This is just based on our discussions with local retailers. But basically, the expectation is that you should be able to buy an RX 6600 XT like AMD promised, but it won't be at the MSRP. It'll be at a modest inflation above that price point. One retailer described this higher than MSRP retail price as the real MSRP based on expected future shipments. So as a quick summary, 6600 XT supply is looking decent, at least for the short term. Pricing is looking not great, but okay. And AMD appeared to have not lied to us on this occasion, though the reality of the situation isn't quite as rosy as was suggested. The second important thing to talk about in this video is now that we have a good look at pricing and availability, how does this affect our recommendation for the 6600 XT? In our initial review, we were pretty lukewarm on the card overall. Steve was certainly unimpressed with the MSRP and said it was effectively a 5700 XT for 5700 XT prices. But you can't buy the 5700 XT at its launch price anymore, not even close. So where do things stand right now? In most regions, the RX 6600 XT is by far the best value GPU that you can buy on retail shelves right now. Locally, we're looking at prices starting at 700 Australian dollars, which, yeah, it is inflated over the MSRP, but the nearest cards from Nvidia are the RTX 3060 and RTX 3060 Ti, which surprisingly both go for around the $1,100 mark. In the case of the 3060 Ti, 
That means the NVIDIA alternative is 57% more expensive for 20% more performance at 1440p and additional features like DLSS and superior ray tracing. That's far from good value for the NVIDIA card and with similar margins seen in other regions, it's hard to justify the NVIDIA option. Even AMD's own 6700 XT looks like bad value right now compared to the 6600 XT. In Australia, you're faced with about a 60% price increase to go from the 6600 XT to the 6700 XT for just a 30% improvement to performance at 1440p. 6700 XT prices have been increasing at retail for a few months now from what used to be very attractive price points for us locally, but that's no longer the case with the 6600 XT in the picture. Whichever way you look at it, there's no doubt in that right now the 6600 XT is the best value GPU you can currently purchase. But it's still hard to recommend, isn't it? I mean, all these comparisons are basically comparing one poo sandwich to another poo sandwich, and that's not the sort of sandwich that I personally enjoy. Saying that one GPU is better value than another in this market doesn't mean a whole lot when almost every single card you can purchase is terrible, atrocious value. Where the 6600 XT ends up is basically being the least worst option rather than a best value sort of product. And that's because in a normal market with normal prices, it would be very hard to recommend a 6600 XT. You would be pretty comfortably choosing to buy the $400 GeForce RTX 3060 Ti instead. So it's hard not to feel ripped off in some way purchasing a 6600 XT at a price above the already mediocre MSRP. And I think this is why we're seeing 6600 XT sit on shelves at above MSRP prices in some regions, and why retailers are reporting underwhelming sales to us. It just doesn't seem like a good value purchase or something that delivers appropriate performance at this sort of price tier in 2021, even if the value proposition is decent compared to other cards in the market right now. And I think it goes beyond that with several factors at play. Firstly, how many people out there are looking to upgrade their GPU to a 6600 XT that provides cost per frame really no better than the 5700 XT that launched in 2019? 5700 XT owners obviously have no incentive to upgrade. Similar if you have anything better than an RTX 2060 Super, the performance gain just isn't significant enough. Even owners of the RTX 2060, you're only looking at a 30% performance increase in the best case at 1080p, which isn't really a large enough gain to tempt an upgrade right now. So really, to bother moving up to a 6600 XT, you'd have to have at least a, something like a GTX 1660 Ti or an RX 590, or ideally an even lower end card, something that's going to give you around that 50% performance improvement that typically justifies an upgrade. This could also mean upgrading from a card several generations old. This would, in a lot of cases, mean moving up a price tier. If you'd previously been a 1660 Ti or GTX 1060 buyer, you'd be used to spending $250 to $300 on a GPU. Now you're facing spending at least $450 on an upgrade, which is beyond the price range of mainstream customers. But it's worse than that even, because GPU buyers have had the opportunity to upgrade to this price to performance ratio in the past with the 5700 XT. In 2019, if you were sitting there with a GTX 1060 and chose not to upgrade to a 5700 XT, why would you suddenly change your mind and grab a card that right now is presenting worse value? A lot of potential upgraders already made the decision to pass on that sort of upgrade and value proposition. That decision in many cases hasn't changed, which is why a lot of people are passing on the 6600 XT as well. Polls across our Twitter account and the Gamers Nexus Twitter account illustrate this well, with an overwhelming majority of respondents saying they wouldn't buy a 6600 XT even at the MSRP. So the amount of people where this upgrade makes sense is small. The second factor is something Steve spoke about in his original review. High-end GPUs are still selling out at ridiculous prices because high-end buyers have the cash to spend, and in some instances will just pay whatever it takes to get the level of performance they need. Whereas more mainstream buyers are more patient and on the lookout for good deals, and will pass over poor deals or poor value products. I mean, we're talking about a class of buyers that has been waiting patiently for nearly a year now for a good value next-gen GPU. Waiting a little longer for something other than a 6600 XT doesn't seem so bad. It's a bit of a case of too little too late for AMD, as I'm sure the 6600 XT would have looked a lot more attractive at the height of the GPU pricing and availability insanity back in March. Another element that has contributed to the lackluster reception to the 6600 XT, even at what appears to be reasonable value in the current ecosystem, is AMD's marketing. AMD made a huge blunder advertising the 6600 XT as a 1080p GPU. 
1080p is a resolution for entry-level gamers these days. It's old school news, it's outdated outside of competitive gaming. Even if the card is actually okay at 1440p, and the 6600 XT is faster than an RTX 2070 at 1440p, so it's no slouch, advertising a $380 US GPU as a 1080p gaming card, and then seeing actual prices 20% above that, is quickly going to turn buyers away. No one wants to spend that amount on a 1080p GPU, and regardless of whether it's a you know decent at 1440p or not, AMD's push for this GPU at 1080p was, in my opinion, a significant mistake that appears to be hurting sales. So we've got this compounding problem for the 6600 XT. It's poor value at its MSRP. It is available, but most cards are priced above that already poor MSRP. It doesn't make sense as an upgrade for many current GPU owners, especially those that already passed on this value proposition in prior years. It was released too late into a mid-range market that has become comfortable to waiting for the best value, and on top of that it was advertised as a 1080p GPU, in a price range where consumers expect better. Right now we can only recommend the RX 6600 XT if you are desperate for a GPU, because to be fair, it is the best value card on the market. If you're building a PC for the first time, if you're using a really old GPU and it's no longer adequate, if you're on integrated graphics with an APU, these are all potential avenues where buying a 6600 XT makes sense. For anyone else though, if you've already got a half decent GPU, it might make sense to just keep those settings turned down a bit and keep waiting as you have been for months now until something great value pops up. To get a much stronger recommendation, the RX 6600 XT really needed to be priced no more than $300 US at its MSRP, ideally slightly lower than that, and then with current 20% price inflation, an actual retail price of $360 would have been easier to stomach. It would have been a great value card in its own right, and overwhelmingly good value up against the ridiculous price inflation of Nvidia GPUs right now, but as it stands, in today's market with today's pricing, it just doesn't feel like the winner that I think AMD was hoping it would be. Anyway, that's it for this sort of re-look at the 6600 XT now that we've got firm pricing and availability information, a bit of an updated conclusion. Obviously, when we produce the day one review, we don't know how the market is going to respond. And it seems like, yeah, the 6600 XT hasn't exactly been flying off shelves, despite it being quite a cheap GPU in the current state of things. So we'll keep monitoring it. We'll keep seeing whether we see 6600 XTs back at the MSRP or not. I really think they need to be no more than the MSRP to be yeah, good value buy. And as I said, it needs to be probably even a bit cheaper than that. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. If you're interested in supporting the channel, we do have our Patreon float plan accounts. Links to those are in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.